Hey, I'm Lauren from TastyPC.TV and today I'm going to be doing a video on a Mini ITX Home Fitter PC build. Now I realise that Mini ITX builds are getting increasingly popular and I've got a few parts that I thought would make a really great Home Fitter PC. Um, now I have to say this build isn't going to be massively overkill, it's going to be quite like a, a medium um, budget build, but I'm very happy with all the parts going in it and I will talk you through the parts and cover some features of them as I'm installing them. Um, now this is going to be a really strange video because it's kind of like a mix of several over reviews and like product showcases with like a time-lapse installation so it's I've never filmed a video this way before I'm very interested to see what you'll think of it in the comments below but hopefully this video will give you some idea of like a mini ITX build or a home fitter PC if you're looking to make either one um so let's get started so firstly the case that I'm going to be using is the Node 304. Now I actually contacted Fractal Design and specifically asked for one of these cases because from what I could see it's the perfect case for many different styles of mini ITX builds and it keeps with the sleek design that you expect from Fractal Design while having everything you need to be able to build either a sophisticated home fit PC, a workstation, a file server or even like a sexy small form factor gaming rig and to cover the features for you during the installation process. The Mini ITX board that I'm going to be using in this system is a SOTAC A75 ITX Wi-Fi motherboard and with it I am going to be using an AMD A10 5800K APU. Um, it's a 3.8GHz core core APU, it's unlocked for overclockability and it's using AMD Radeon 7660U graphics. Now this is the first time that I've actually ever used an AMD chipset so you are watching me fit an AMD APU for the first time ever. Um, but there are some benefits to using an APU in this rig, for example the fact that I now don't have to fit a graphics card, um, making APUs the perfect solution for a lot of home fitter PCs and actually probably the better option over Intel at the moment for home fitter PCs. Um, but the memory that I'm going to be using is two DIMMs of Corsair Vengeance Low Profile Blue 1600MHz 8GB DDR3 memory. Um, and this SOTEC motherboard supports up to 16GB 1866MHz memory. The cooler that I'm going to be using in this build is the Corsair H60. Now this is a close loop liquid cooler with a 27mm thick 120mm rat. And as I do prefer to use liquid coolers over air coolers, I'm definitely going to make use of the fact that the Node 304 can support them. Although I did find when fitting the cooler there was some issues with the H60 tubes and memory clearance. So for that reason I did have to fit it upside down so that the tubes were on the other side of the motherboard. Um, now the H60 does come with an SP120 air 120mm fan, but I'm not actually going to be using that fan in the build. Now I'm not actually going to be fitting any hard drives in the system, as my parents just have a single side state drive in here, and then to stream the content over the network from my main rig. Um, but this case can support up to 6 hard drives or solid state drives, 2 in each tray. Um, however, depending on whether or not you have the hard drive tray closest to the camera in, determines how long of a graphics card you can fit, but I'll cover the measurements later. Now I would recommend removing the hard drives at this point even if you are going to be making use of them, just as it makes a No. 3 or 4 easier to work in. So the next thing that I'm going to do is remove the inbuilt fan controller. Now this is powered by Molex and has three fan headers to allow you to control the three included fans either 5, 7 or 12 volts. And even though I do need four fan headers, two for the um, two included 92mm fans, one for the 120mm fan and one for the H60, and even though my motherboard only has two fan headers, I'm actually going to be using two splitters. And this means that I save on having to plug a cable in to power it, but also so the finished system just looks a little bit tidier. Um, so then I removed the 140mm fan because obviously the H60 only supports 120mm fan um, and then also while preparing the case for the motherboard I decided that now was a good time to remove this top bar as it will be easier for me to get inside the case. All you've got to do is remove um, two screws on this side and then two screws on the other side which I've already done and then it comes straight off. Um, and with this removed it doesn't seem to make the frame any less sturdy. Finally I installed the motherboard standoffs before fitting the board which is actually a little fiddly to do because the power supply mounting bracket does kind of restrict your movement um, but also because I had the H60's radiator to manage as well but even then I definitely think it's much easier to already have your CPU and cooler fitted before fitting the board. The power supply that I'm going to be using for this build is the Be Quiet Pure Power L8 430W semi modular power supply. Now this is an 80 plus bronze efficiency rate power supply and it's pretty cheap, making it perfect for budget, good faith money builds like this. Also completely by accident, the orange ring around the fan actually matches the SOTAC motherboard's colour scheme, not that you'll see it once it's in the rig. So I did then fit the power supply and plugged in the mains extension cable that comes with the case. Although annoyingly it's actually slightly longer than it needs to be, given the fact that it doesn't actually need to reach anywhere but here. 
Um, so I then just plugged in the 4 pin CPU cable and the 24 pin cable just so I don't have to worry about them later. The single fan I'm going to be using on the H60 is a Phobia Noise Blocker E Loop 120mm fan. Now, these are actually my favourite fans at the moment, and I'll put the link to my review of them in the description below. Um, but I'm going to be fitting the fan in push configuration because Noise Blocker E Loop fans are loud in a pull configuration. Um, but once I'd fit the fans to the rad, I fit the rad to the case, having to direct the tubes accordingly. We are now at a point in the build where it pretty much looks like how it's going to look when it's finished. However, I do want to experiment with fitting a graphics card in the rig just so you can see what it looks like. Now I'm just removing the PCIe slot covers and getting ready to fit the card. This is probably a good time to mention an issue that you might have when using a standard size ATX power supply in a graphics card. Basically, because I'm using a modular power supply, when I fit the card, I'm not going to be able to use the PCIe connectors on the power supply. Now with this case I really wouldn't recommend a non-modular power supply as the cables will be very hard to manage, but maybe just like a power a mod semi-modular power supply that already had a couple of PCIe connectors like hardwired into the non-modular bit might have been better. Um, but this B-Pipe power supply has got two 12 volt rails and the one that I want to use is the one with the green PCIe connector. I don't want to use the red one um, because they've made it red on purpose. So after much research, because Weepipe doesn't actually list this on their site, I found that the Molex and SATA connections actually use the same rail as the green PCIe connector, which means that I will be able to power the card um, completely fine using a Molex to PCIe connector adapter. Um, and I have to say that I actually never thought these adapters would come in handy with modern day builds, but I guess I was wrong. So that's the graphics card fitted. After that, I just wired everything up, fit the 240GB Corsair Neutron solid state drive that I'm going to be using to the top of the power supply. I'm sticking it down with that same sticky stuff that I used to stick it to the back of the optical base in the XLR2. And then after a lot of cable management, this is my finished build. I also added a red phobia flex light just to make it glow and I have to say that I'm really happy with how it looks. I mean, I know the graphics card is unnecessary for the build that I was going for, but this gives you kind of a rough starting point if you are looking to build a low budget home fitter PC. But I am going to be doing a full up video on this with benchmarks and other tests etc. But if you like this video hit the like button, don't forget to subscribe and thanks for watching.